Hello, everybody. Zach here. Welcome back to The Grid. This is episode two. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Oculus Quest. Today's video, we're going to talk about side quest and virtual desktop. I deem those the two true killer apps for the Quest. I'm going to go into setup uh, and a little bit more discussion about the two of those things. One is truly an app that you can just get right off the Oculus store. And the other is what we're going to use to make that app better. So let's hop right into it. So many people would say that Half-Life Alex is the killer VR app in 2020. And those people would be right. With over 40,000 concurrent users at one point, it topped the previous record of Beat Saber with only 4,000, and that was earlier in the year. So it truly is a system seller. The Valve Index has sold greatly, although it's hard to pinpoint a number of exactly how many indexes have been sold so far, and same with Half-Life Alex being a digital game. That being said, it's it's true that when Valve gets behind something, they're really going to put it all in, in terms of a more full-fledged game, as well as a very high-end premium VR headset. And that's exactly the problem. For many, the Valve index is unattainable. It's either too expensive, or it's just too much to sink into VR at this time. And on top of that, it has long lead times to get one, if you even want to get one at retail prices. That also seems to be a problem nowadays, regardless of headset. It's very difficult to get your hands on one at retail. If you want to go see Grid Episode 1, I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to snag an Oculus Quest, but you can use that basically for any other headset. But anyways, how do you get into Half-Life Alex at a more affordable price? Well, the short answer is you can use many different headsets. There's Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Those tended to be closer to that $200, $300 range just a little bit ago. That being said, a lot of them have gone up in price over the last couple months due to just lack of stock options in all of the other headsets. That being said, there's still a affordable option on getting in to something like Half-Life Alex. Valve intentionally built Half-Life Alex for as many virtual or to work with as many virtual reality headsets as they possibly could. Um, and that's saying something too, in terms of not only what Valve can do, what they have the money to do, but also that they do care. They want this not only to sell, they also want virtual reality to sell. And I feel like it's the top and the start of kind of a ramp up in terms of virtual reality headset sales and due to the current climate, that makes sense too. So let's talk about my and many others most ideal way to play. Why not use the versatility of an all cordless setup? Maybe you're thinking setup will be a headache. Well, trust me, I tried to set up a PSVR with a PC. Now, mind you, it's more of a hack. It's not a experience that is supposed to work out of the box by any means. That being said, I left with a lot of headaches. I wanted to throw the headset and I kind of gave up. This experience is much more full-fledged with a lot less hacky stuff. And I think if you have all of the equipment you need, it will be a enjoyable experience for you. So what do you need? Well, this should be fairly obvious. An Oculus Quest, a VR capable computer, um, you know, something that meets that minimum requirements for VR and ideally above that, but there's actually some wiggle room with even Alex in terms of what it can be, what can be used to play it. Uh, you're going to want a five gigahertz capable router. Um, a link in the description, a couple that I recommend the issue with even recommending that kind of stuff is your internet may vary. Your conditions may vary. You're going to have to play around with some settings. Um, and you're gonna have to ideally want the Quest to be one of the only things on your five gigahertz network too. But we'll get a little bit more into that and I can talk to people a little bit more about that if they need to. Um, you're also going to want a USB-C to USB-A or just a USB-C to C cable that's more for data transfer rather than what came with the Oculus Quest. And that's why one of the reasons why the link cable and all these other cables are more desirable is because they're less just 
charging cables and they're more data cables. So you'll want one like that because you'll actually be plugging in the Oculus Quest at one point to your computer. For software, you're gonna wanna purchase the virtual desktop from the Oculus Store that you can do in the headset or in the app. You're actually purchasing the virtual desktop app and we're going to add a side-loaded version that makes it even better. So you'll wanna do that and then you're gonna get the streamer app for your PC. That's pretty easy. Show you here, show you here, and links will be in the description as well for that. If you wanna just see your desktop and utilize your PC like this, you can, but it will only be essentially in 2D and streamed onto a movie theater or you know even a, a fake PC monitor. It's still very useful, and I think a lot of people will actually have a use case for this. Uh, a lot of people already have and have been able to use it as a just a more immersive and you can kind of get rid of all the distractions that you would typically or potentially get with a PC. But that's the thing, we're here to play VR and utilize our desktop to play VR wirelessly. And that's not that hard either. Let's first go to Oculus and install the Oculus software on our computer. You can select the Quest or the Rift software, it's all gonna download the same installer, um, at least as of this recording. And we won't really have to use it again past this. You, you'd be able to use it if you wanna run things in it, but you don't really have to use it past this point. Now go over to SideQuest. And these steps are pretty easy to follow. I'll tell you at first, I thought they were missing some steps because I used to come from, you know, hacking Android stuff and used to go have to go through a lot more hoops to get anything to work. This is actually a pretty seamless experience and I'll go through the steps with you right now. Step one, you're gonna to wanna to install SideQuest. You're gonna download it right here on SideQuest's site and let the installer do its work. It's really that easy in terms of installing the app. Step two, we've gotta create an organization. To do this, you're gonna head over to the Oculus website and create a developer account. Again, pretty easy, free, simple, fast. Um, and we're gonna create an organization in here, which you're, you can name whatever you want. You're gonna use that uh, down the road here. We're going to install the drivers. This applies to Windows only, of course, but that's what you're here for. Uh, you're gonna download the drivers, extract, and then you're gonna run the file called Android underscore WinUSB. Uh, you're gonna right click on that INF and install, and you, you may, depending on your computer, have to run with administrator privileges. We're going to go over to the Oculus app and de enable developer mode. This is easy as well. Head over to your app, select the quest, like your quest itself, go to settings and tap developer mode. It's a good idea to restart the device after this to truly enable developer mode on it. You're gonna want to be running SideQuest if you haven't started it already. And then you're gonna go on to the last step. We're gonna plug the quest in. Like I said, you're gonna wanna use a cable other than the one that came with the quest. Ideally a data, data cable, something of a decent quality as well. Anchor power line cables seem to work for a lot of people and I have some of those as well. One note here though, ensure that your pattern dislock or unlock um, is disabled, which you can do in settings, quest, more settings, unlock pattern. Most people probably don't even have this set up um, if you've just gotten your headset or what have you, it's not enabled by default. And then once you're connected, you're gonna get a prompt on the headset. So place the headset on your face and allow USB debugging. It's what we're gonna use for the side quest to move files over to the headset. And that's it. Your headset should show up on SideQuest, and it's as easy as choosing one of these programs to install. By the way, there are a bunch of really good free titles here that are in various stages of development, so you can feel free to check those out. Um, they may, those games that are on there may or may not be coming to the Oculus Store at some point, so you can get a taste of them or you can get a sense of the development. Some of them may not. Um, they may not have been approved or they may just be in different stages of development, but I would definitely check them out. But here we're gonna scroll down to the virtual desktop app. We're gonna sideload that. It's easy as clicking and hitting install. And that's gonna sideload this version of virtual desktop that's gonna allow for us to use true VR experiences inside of the Quest. Then you're gonna hop onto your Quest, boot up virtual desktop, and on the side, you're gonna have the option to start VR and run VR apps. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna launch Steam VR on your machine. So if you got some Steam VR capable titles, you'll be able to play them and they will be completely streamed regularly, quote unquote, to the Quest. This is the ideal scenario for me. You are um, 60 OF, you have your, your wireless controllers, you have a wireless headset, 
and you're playing completely wirelessly. And if you need additional power, you can just get a power pack or something. So if you want to play for longer, um, I think this is the most immersive way that you can do this kind of stuff. And now there were always um, HTC had the, the wireless packs and everything to various degrees of working, <laughs> quote unquote. So this is what's impressive to me, that this type of thing is possible. I'm hopeful that Oculus down the road will come up with an update to more tradition to support this more traditionally, almost how they have updated and allowed for casting um, out of beta and how seamlessly that works. Uh, I know the link cable has worked for a lot of people, but in the same vein, I've heard a lot of people it's not worked for them or they've had various degrees of success with third party cables, which makes sense. Um, there's a lot of different manufacturing and, and USB-C is a, is a tricky one. Um, so we'll have to see, but I do, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that Oculus will see the importance of this and what it can do. And the quest has gotten an insane amount of updates. Um, it seems to be the focus of Oculus in a lot of ways, um, considering they have in the newest update hand tracking and almost more of an, you know, mixed reality, uh, by enabling very easily to get into your guardian view, um, and even set it up as an environment. It's pretty crazy. So I'm very hopeful that that will change down the road and we will get a more, uh, Oculus form of this. Um, even put the potential I see is something like a dongle and they could sell it, uh, that you plug in your computer that does directly, um, talk to the quest so we'll have to see anyways guys if you have questions i'll do my best to answer them i can't say that i can troubleshoot everybody's computer there's going to be a lot of different hardware variants here but i'm going to do my best to answer each and every one of your questions if you have a question when you're trying to set this up like i said in my previous episode of the grid i want to be as helpful as possible and i want to give back to the community in any way i kind of can I like this technical stuff, and I know that even something that I deem as simple isn't necessarily simple. Definitely if this is one of your first devices you're doing this with, because um, the Quest is essentially an, an Android uh, device, and I love this stuff. So, And I think this is where it shines. Um, if you have, like I said, the hardware, the capable, the capable hardware uh, in every way, it can truly shine and be an even better experience. I mean, I've heard the nightmare stories of driver stuff. I've had <laughs> nightmare stories of driver stuff myself with a varying degree of things, audio, video. Um, the PSVR was a great example of, I even downloaded, an not an official, sorry, but a third-party application and multiple third-party applications to get it to work. And I wanted to lose my mind because drivers. So, of course, <laughs> PSVR, as I've said, is not an officially supported um VR headset by PCs, but you know, this is a little less hacky. Uh, it's a lot less hacky in my opinion. And uh, you can get into a full immersive VR experience like something like Half-Life Alex or any of your desktop VR experiences, but on the quest. So like I said, guys, um, in the last episode two, thank you for watching the grid. Thank you for giving me a chance. If you like this VR content, if you like the grid, if you like the style, Please let me know by liking the video, share it on social media, follow me on social media at Zach Hausnecht. Links will be in the description, of course, and I'll see you guys the next time. Bye. See you guys on the next time. See you guys on the next one. Bye.